We live on an acreage outside of the city. And one of our favorite things to do that we got into during the pandemic was we started watching the Aurora Borealis out in our backyard. And I love it. I love doing it. And my kids got into doing it. So um, the Aurora Borealis are something that's very special to us. And then also during the pandemic was when I started dyeing yarn. The name just kind of comes from that. We have kind of on our long-term goals to get some sheep to add to our little farm here. And the place where the sheep barn will go is actually the hill where we watch the Aurora right now. So the love of sheep, the love of the Northern Lights, we kind of combined combined that to make Borealis. I put it out on a Ravelry group and just sort of said, here's a few things that we love. Here's a bit about our family. And um, somebody actually, the first person who responded said, how about Borealis? But she had about 10 A's in it. And then she just laughed at herself and said, I'll see myself out. Like, that's such a ridiculous answer. There's no way anybody would choose that. And right away it was like, no, that's perfect. We'll cut down the number of A's to just two. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But it was perfect. And I I loved her reaction to it too. I have two sort of fiber besties, fiber friends. um, And one of them had talked for a long time about dyeing yarn. And it was something that was kind of her dream that she wanted to do. But she started up a whole other business during COVID on a mat leave. She's a psychologist and she started up her own business, which is doing just absolutely incredible but her and I decided one night I said you know what I think let's let's just do it let's let's try this my daughter was sleep training that week and I was like I need something to take my mind off of it so she came over and we dyed a couple of pots of yarn we did a little um five-step gradient and it was like this is I, I just got hooked right away this is fantastic I love it very quickly we realized or I realized because she she came and did the five pots and left. And then I just kept going and kept going. <laughs> and I realized very quickly, as a lot of dyers do, that when you start dyeing your own yarn, you accumulate a lot of yarn really quickly. Uh, like a ridiculous amount of yarn. And so before I had kids, I had had a different Etsy shop that did fairly well. And I thought, well, what if I try that again? And um, it grew very quickly from an Etsy shop to wow, Alberta has such a fantastic fiber community. And there's so many people here that I wanted to get to know and, um, and see. And the uh, fiber frolic, you know, the gathering threads has been fantastic and sort of connecting those people. Instagram is such a great place to connect those people. And everybody, like every time I meet more of these fiber people, I just get inspired to do more and to try more things. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun taking on different projects. It's snowballed way faster than I thought it would, uh, but it's been great. A lot of fun. My product is my half of the art. So I do the colors. I put them together in sets that I love and that look good to me. And my product is for whatever artist is ready to take the next step with it and make it into something beautiful. And I really, um, I really feel that, that that people who work with fiber are artists, regardless of what part of the process they're um, doing, whether it's making the yarn or spinning the yarn or dyeing the yarn or knitting the yarn or crocheting the yarn or whatever anybody dreams up. So I love seeing pictures of the finished products of what people make because it's, I really do feel like we're artists working on the same project together. I love the fact that it could be any person. It could be any person. It could be You know, a stay-at-home mom who's just getting a little bit of uh, me time in her day doing something repetitive so that she has the patience to deal with the kids. It could be, you know, a guy who's just loving the art of putting together different fibers. It It could be a grandma, but it's not necessarily a grandma. It could be... My 10-year-old daughter who loves to um, make things with the yarn that I've made. Or my 7-year-old son who likes to dye yarn to make hats for his uh, teacher. And, you know, it's just, it can be anybody. It doesn't have to be the old grandma that it used to be. Um, and that some some people see as, you know, the knitter. There's so many people now. And it's such a a diverse group, which I love. It's not this Caucasian person. It's not this female person. It's not this old person. It's all of the people. 
sometimes I'm surprised that the market isn't saturated. Like there's so many dyers out there. I kind of thought when I got started, well, who's going to buy my yarn? Because there's so many people. There's so many people selling yarn. There's so much beautiful yarn out there. There can't possibly be too much of a space for more dyers. But apparently there is. Apparently there's a ton of space <laughs> because uh, there's. I guess there's just a lot of people who want yarn. I do full skeins of yarn, but not as much. And it's it's not what I'm passionate about. And it's not what sells the best for me. Um, I do a lot of mini sets and there are different kinds like gradient sets or hand painted sets. So people use them for color work. People use them for just gradients on um, socks or baby garments or all sorts of things. But it's sort of the gradient and the hand-painted sets that I think I is something a little bit more different that I do than, than some people. I do um, full skeins, and a lot of that is just when people ask me to make coordinating ones for the sets that I have. Um, but yeah, mini sets, I love them. And everybody loves them, right? They're such a, they feel like such a treat to get this little set that feels so full of possibilities like it could be anything but whatever it is it's going to be beautiful so you're going to love it well one product line I am working on right now I haven't actually told anybody what it is so I guess maybe this is my moment um, I'm working on a rainbow right now um, and I I just love it rainbows are beautiful everybody you know has seen beautiful rainbows at some point rainbows have a lot of um, symbolism and meaning um sort of historically, spiritually, they have a lot of meaning. They have a lot of meaning now in terms of inclusivity. I've knit up a few samples. One is um, a lamb sweater that I've taken pictures of some lambs wearing this sweater and it's just absolutely darling. <laughs> Stay tuned for pictures, cutest ever. And then I've got some socks that are really fantastic. I've got that on a bunch of different bases, like a DK and a sparkle and just a regular sock. Um, so those will be a lot of fun. I'll have those um, at the festival in, in May. Um, I have a lot of hand-painted sets that I'm going to be working on to do those because they're, I find them the most artistic for me as a dyer. And then they have so much possibilities for shawls or color work yokes or things like a sock head hat are perfect for them. So I'll have a lot of those at the Fiber Frolic as well, or the Gathering Threads. <laughs> and I'm playing with bases. I always love playing with bases. So tweeds and sparkle. Um, I have two giant boxes of sparkle yarn in my basement that still is telling me what it wants to be. <laughs> um, Instagram is really the social media where I am most active. I'm I always love custom orders or custom requests because I find that increases the art aspect for me. So um, Instagram is a place to find me. There's a link there to my website, which is barrialisfiber.com. And then that links you to my Etsy shop, which is where I'm doing most of my online sales these days. A lot of times people will send me a photo and ask me to make um, sets for them based on that. So if anyone wants to do that, um, yeah, Instagram, email, place to find me.